Hello, my name is Håkon and welcome back to my channel where today I'm having a little look at this. This is the Jewel Attenuator, which is one of the designs I've been working on for my Phenol Modular Expansion project. Uh, yesterday I drilled all these holes for the potentiometers, the sockets and the LED on and off switch and of course the LEDs as well. Um, I did make a video about it but it was very hard to edit because I was working on this for four full hours and uh, looking at somebody uh, making lots of mistakes while doing this sort of stuff isn't perhaps the most exciting thing to watch. Uh, certainly not the most exciting thing to edit, I can tell you that. Um, I'll just go through this very briefly, I think, what I was doing. So. Uh, in my video before that, I mentioned that I had glued the print onto the plywood panel and that works really well. And also the glue on the front makes it very, it feels very scratch proof, the surface. So that's actually quite good. Um, for the drilling, I did notice that I had underestimated the size of the holes. Uh, Apart from the LEDs, which were perfect, all the other holes, uh, and of course the switch as well, all the other holes needed to be a bit bigger than I thought they needed to be. So I needed to uh, do some filing, I needed to do some extra drilling, and eventually they all got to be the right size. Um, for the LED switch, um, the socket is, I think it needs to be 11 or 12 millimeters, but I don't have a drill bigger than... 10 so I still needed to file it out just to make it fit anyway um, one thing I did notice working in this cheap plywood is it is quite brittle you get breakout very easily it lifts up a little bit when you drill and because I have glued on the front panel first um, I can't just sand down the front to get a nice smooth surface so if you see here with the mounting holes as a little bit of a crater sticking up a crater edge sticking up from the hole not ideal uh, also you notice the leds are a bit wonky uh, accidentally uh, because i didn't do a proper pilot hole so i did learn a lot from doing this another thing i did which i might show a little clip of uh, in this video is I used, of course, the cheap six millimeter friction fit potentiometers for this. Um, and these knobs are quarter inch, that's 6.35 millimeters, and they are intended for a smooth knob. No, sorry, for a smooth shaft potentiometer. Um, and attached with a grub screw or a worm screw, um, these, uh, these knobs. Um, so the way I did it is I shimmed out the potentiometers with a little bit of coke can. So I took one layer uh, of coke can, wrapped it around uh, through the center cut of the potentiometer and taped it in place and then I put on the knobs and tightened the worm screws, which does work. But um, it means, it's especially the big one here, is a little bit it's a little bit wobbly, so it's not ideal. I am expecting very soon uh, a shipment of a little sort of brass shims, little tubes that can be put on top of a friction fit uh, or slotted fit um, a potentiometer shaft and it will increase the diameter from 6 to 6.35 allowing the use of quarter inch knobs which are quite common on six millimeter potentiometers which are the most common. Uh, the wiring uh, is quite simple. I'll just show you now how I did this very quickly. Um, so I've got the inputs up here. Um, the signal from the inputs are merged together so they don't have two different paths yet. So they both go to the left leg of the potentiometer in the middle here and they also go to the LEDs so they go to the uh, if I remember correctly now it's the short leg of the red and the long leg of the green 
LED so that they show different polarities of voltage. So the red one lights up when the voltage is negative, the green one lights up when the voltage is positive. The output from the LEDs go to ground but it goes via the switch so that the LEDs can be switched off entirely if I want to because LEDs they take a bit of voltage and they change the signal and sometimes I may want to, to use almost a full signal range and uh, not attenuate it as so much as I would do if the LEDs are on but very often I would need a lower signal level than the LEDs um, will um, reduce the signal to and then I can switch them on and it looks really nice and uh, it's um, also it's a nice switch as well I really like this switch okay um, and then this first potentiometer is a 500k, uh, no sorry, it's a 100k uh, potentiometer uh, and I'm using it as a variable resistor, not as a potentiometer in the sense that it's, uh, it works as a voltage divider, it works as a variable resistor. So I'm only using two of the legs on it at the time here, so it goes input on the left leg here, output on the middle, and then that goes into both of the inputs of these two 10k potentiometers down here so these are now in parallel with each other and um, they both have their ground pin connected to ground and then the outputs are separately moved out to two separate outputs and what that allows me to do is to set these two at different levels meaning that the output is going to be two different voltages that move in parallel when you turn this knob here in the middle, which is a very interesting design, I think, for playing. Um, so that means one signal in, or technically you could have two signals, but they are merged together. And then they are output in parallel. Uh, as different signals, slightly different signals, and you can move the parallel signal up and down with the main knob. That's the whole workings of this. Uh, and I'm going to cut after this uh, little spiel now, I'm going to cut to uh, a little demonstration of how that works in practice after I wired it up. Uh, although um, when I was doing this, I did put in, first of all, a uh, potentiometer that was broken for the main one here so I had to replace that so when I'm playing it I'm demonstrating um, it by just hooking it up with crocodile clips to a different potentiometer. Now I was not very happy with the plywood in terms of working properties so I've been thinking of an alternative uh, that uh, I'd had a little piece here somewhere. Where is it gone now? Uh, yeah, let's show you this this material here. So uh, this is two millimeter or one point eight actually poster board. Um, it is not that much less stiff actually than the three millimeter plywood in terms of dimensional stability it also it doesn't warp as easily as the plywood it's not as solid but i might find some way to make it more rigid and this has an interesting advantage in that it is printable so i can print it directly on this material i don't have to print and then glue and then wait and then create the holes now um one thing about this though is that I can't use a drill on it. I did try a drill but it gets too ruffled up so that does not look nice unless it's a hole that is completely covered uh, around the edges like uh, like the banana jacks or the or the uh, potentiometers of course um, but something like the LEDs would not look nice at all. So what I will do with this, and I did try this as well, is to use uh, hole punches. Um, so I've got a set of hole punches uh, coming in. I've got all the different sizes I need for the metrics. Uh, so from three millimeters up to 11, I think, and some halves as well. This is just a really tiny hole punch. Of course, it is easier with a big one, uh, but just as a sort of a proof of concept, 
So I'll do it like that. I can actually punch it through like so. And actually that doesn't look too bad. I can still, I can sand or file at the back um, just like I would with plywood. And it makes a nice hole and I will get these in all different sizes. Uh, it works quite well with these even though they're not super sharp. And that will allow me to create these panels more easily, actually. Uh, it's also a lot easier to cut. I mean, I was really struggling when I was sawing this out because the plywood was flexing so much. Uh, and also I did make the mistake of sawing it out after I put on the components because I was... Uh, the thing is, I was doing the drilling and basically cutting is meant to come after drilling but when i was doing the drilling i also had to test fit the components and then i had to drill it out even more and then i had to put them on again and then i just kept them on because i was so preoccupied with making them fit um so with this thing um of course i will know all what all the sizes i need for the holes are i will punch them out and it will also be pre-cut i can actually cut it before i do that um, and cutting it is really, really easy. Um, I could use a guillotine. Of course, I do have a big guillotine uh, cutter, but of course, um, all one needs really is a ruler, a steady hand, and you just cut really carefully to start with. So you just score it ever so gently and just keep doing that until You've cut all the way through basically and that's that's how it works i haven't cut all the way through now but almost um so it's quite easy to cut easy to work with um and it will make my life a lot easier uh, in terms of creating these front panels and and of course for this one i can just transfer this one to the other one now um of course this is going to be a naked print now i may want to try also using uh, some varnish or perhaps the pva glue again uh, on the front to give it that scratch proof surface that i've got on this uh, so that is something i will experiment with and see if it makes it harder to punch through for instance it probably does um but in any case, this is now the material I will try to work with when I do more modules on when I redo this one as well. Uh, I will redo this one when I get the shims, the brass tubings for expanding the potentiometer shafts um, because then I'll need to remove the knobs anyway. So I may as well do the whole thing. Uh, another advantage to this is the thickness because with two millimeter thickness, it is a lot easier to attach all these things here. Um, there's a lot more threading left for me to work with uh, for the banana jacks, for the potentiometers, etc. And so it will be easier to work with these components that are uh, panel mounts on two millimeters because most of them, the three millimeters is really on the outside of uh, the dimensions they are made for. And also the paper that I use and the glue builds up a little bit and so it becomes more than three millimeters uh, as well when I do it this way. So that is the current plan and uh, this is what I did yesterday and I think I'll, I'll not show you the long version of that because it is really long. It was uh, four hours of filming and I've managed to get it down to maybe one and a half hours and I still think that's too long. Uh, it's not very exciting. It is me drilling. It is me soldering. Very basic soldering. Nothing exciting. Putting on some shrink tubing. Uh, doing a little bit of troubleshooting when I realized, of course, that this uh, potentiometer didn't work. Well, actually, that wasn't the first thing. But um, the first thing that I mistake I made on the soldering was, like, you can see here, there's this two wires instead of one going here for, for the ground connection via the from the LEDs to the switch to the ground connection and that is because I forgot to uh, add the switch to that circuit when I was doing this um, and, and that's it really so nothing 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 complicated nothing fancy uh, just drilling sewing uh, putting in components and um, 
yeah, you don't need to see four hours of that, I don't think. So that is uh, the status of the day. I will try to do some printing on this uh, new material at some point during the next few days and see how that behaves. And I will do, um, after I get my punches, that is, so that will be tomorrow, most likely. And then I will try to transfer this one and then I will start working on the other ones. Um, another thing that I'm expecting in the mail is a drill gauge because of all this nonsense I went through drilling these holes. I now want to know for sure that um, I have the right sizes for my holes and so I've um, bought a drill gauge which basically is a, a little stainless steel um, flat um, piece of uh, metal uh, with holes in it with the different sizes and then you take your components like your potentiometers or your sockets and jacks and things and you just put them through and see which hole is the one that fits the best and that's the one you go for that's the drill tells you the drill size you want so that is my status and i'll leave you with my demonstration of how this works uh, after this so i'll cut to that in a few seconds So I've got my phenol out, I've got here my freshly soldered uh, dual attenuator module, my own invention. And first of all, I'll connect the ground of the module to my, let's see if I can get a good place to attach it here now. Maybe it will attach the clip there. Okay, so that's the ground connection there. And I'll connect that to ground on the phenol. Uh, and then it is ready to use. Let's just see now how we can get on. So first of all, I need to create some sound with the phenol so that I can test it with. Um, one thing I often like doing is you see here the output from the envelope shines red even when there's nothing connected and that means it's actually sending out minus five volts of voltage i'm going to put that into the adder i'm going to do the negative output of the adder which means we're turning the negative uh, signal from here into a positive signal and that's going to be our input now into the attenuator you can see the LED there. Actually, I've switched off my light. You see the green LED is shining because it's getting a positive voltage. If I press this button, uh, nothing happens actually. Um, because, but if I do put it on the this one, it's got a negative voltage and the red LED lights up. Um, if I put it into the LFO, because it's quite slow now, you can see it alternates between negative and positive voltage. And that also means that I was actually intending for the LED on to be to be down, but up is actually what I was really hoping for anyway. So that's fine. I'll just um, up is actually what I really wanted for the on switch. So that is fine. So this is working as intended. Um, so let's switch that off for now. And then we'll take the output of, I'll just do a longer cable for that. Uh, the blues and the blacks are short ones and the reds and the yellows are the longer ones. So I'm going to take the left output here to pitch in on oscillator one. I'm going to do the right output to oscillator two. Let's see if I can get some sound from this now. If I also connect the uh, let's do the pulse out that's the left one and then i'll get pulse out as well from the right
equals to triangle, that's a bit smoother, not so harsh. And also it's a little bit more like a sine wave now, so it's easier to hear. So now the inputs are coming from the attenuator. Um, but there's no signal coming into the attenuator right now, it looks like. So, and that is... before I start and doing anything I'll just double check with another potentiometer now so this will go in here instead of this one uh, so I will try to connect this up with these cables here so I've got this one there well actually maybe it would be easier if I connected to the previous connection point here so this one is the same as this here, so to connect that there. And the other one is, let's do that one down there. Now I have to be careful it doesn't short to the other one. Yeah, that looks good. And now this is the middle, and this is, let's see. So it's like like this, just make sure it's the right alignment as well. So it's going to be like so. Let's do the and that sound is because I haven't connected ground. That's the ground in. That's the sound we want. Okay, so now this potentiometer works. the these potentiometers down here now this might be easier to hear if I'm using the because now the frequencies of the different oscillators Okay, 
Okay, so now they're both open and I can... So now there's two outputs from a single input and I create an offset with these. And then I can play, I'll just keep touching this knob here. Yeah, this potential is also dodgy. Let's uh, see if I can find a different one. signals here as well. Let's just try that. Because I'm mixing these signals now. I've got the sine wave and the random LFO mixing. Oh, my God. 
Actually, it goes down quite quickly. Just wondering if um, I should try with a 10k as well. I think 100,000 probably is the, the best for the, uh, the playable knob there. are both open now and all the attenuation is from this and it's still got some of that movement Activity like this so that's the minimum uh, after it goes through the first variable resistor the potentiometer working as a variable resistor which is this one
Yeah, and that is how it works. Um, as long as I don't create any short circuits by bending the wires here, I am fine, it looks like. <clears throat> I need to replace the potentiometer because that is a dud. And um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much all I need to do really. And this will be a successful prototype. Uh, there you go, that's my first try at actually building one of these modules that I've been talking so much about lately. And I will have to go in here and remove this, which won't be too hard actually. So let's make sure I connect the right cables to the right place. Um, shouldn't be too tricky. So uh, these ones need to go off and then I need to attach them to this one. So I'll be doing that off camera probably because I think I've made quite a long enough video already today. So that is the status of my phenol modular expansion project, the dual attenuator ready to go almost, just needing a new potentiometer. There we have it. So um, if you enjoyed watching this, if you learned something from it, if you uh, thought it was rubbish, please let me know. <laughs> please like, share, comment, subscribe, all those things. And I will see you again next time with more videos about this or anything else. And goodbye for now. Bye bye.